gracious good day to one and all once again. Tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States, and Protector of Mexico, back with you as we are every Saturday with our special guest superstar, the Countess Lola Montez of Lansfeld. Good day, Countess. Good day, and thank you once again for having me on. And hello to all of you out there joining us. And I hope you enjoy today's show. And thank you for your comments. Thank you also for those tips that you send in to us. The Empire goes strongly with your help, indeed. Indeed. Yes. And a happy holiday to all of you out there for Labor Day. You know, I think the proletarians in our society do not get all the credit, indeed, that they deserve. No, indeed. And even though you and I are royal, you know, it's without the people that we could not be in power at all, indeed. Absolutely correct. Yes. So, so this is episode number 133. Today is September 5th, 2020. It's our hundred. And 70th day under COVID-19 restrictions. Countess, what do you have for us today? Oh, well, I have a lot in store with a lot of surprises too for you. So I want to put this out to all of our viewers today that at below, please like and also uh, subscribe if you want to stay on top of all the wonderful shows that uh, we're putting out and have suggestions or comments that are welcome for uh, any information about San Francisco history that you would like to know. You can put that in the comments. But, you know, have you been to the dentist lately, Your Majesty? Uh, no, it's been a while. Well, my dental hygienist is really a cute young guy. And every time I visit, I eat a whole package of Oreo cookies while waiting in the lobby. Sometimes he has to cancel the rest of the afternoon appointments. <laughs> what was the Toronto dentist doing in Panama? Why would he be there? Looking for a root canal. They call my dentist the king of dentists because he specializes in crowns. <laughs> what does the dentist of the year get? What would that be? A little plaque. <laughs> what did the dentist... Or how did the dentist become a brain surgeon? How could that possibly be? The drill slipped. <laughs> what do you call a boat full of dentists? What would that be? A tooth fairy. <laughs> you know, I'm dating a dentist and I was confused when he recommended Oral-B. <laughs> Ponder that one. Mm. So, an old lady walked into a dentist's office and took off all her clothes and then spread her legs. And the dentist said, I think you have the wrong room. You put my husband's teeth in last week. Now you have to remove them. <laughs> now, I'm not saying my dentist is a sex machine. I'm just saying he really knows how to fill a cavity. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of filling cavities, I do have a subject for us today. Your Majesty. And what is that? Have you ever heard of Tessie Wall? Oh, vaguely. Well, would you like to know more about her? Oh, absolutely. Yes, well, I will consult my notes just to keep us on task. Now, Teresa Susan Donahue became one of the most famous madams in San Francisco. 
Now, we had a lot of them. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of opportunity over the history of San Francisco and probably still are, but they're, you know, not as well known. Uh, but back in the day, it was a highly comp, uh, very comp, um, there was a lot of competition. Yes, yes. Yes. I get stumbled on words, you know. But back in the day, you know, you could open up a place and, oh my goodness, you talk about finding a fortune. Many people came here to seek gold, but it was others that mined the miners mm -hmm. in those early days. But the story of, of Tessie Wool is one in particular of interest because she was one of our own. She grew up here in San Francisco. Oh, really? Yes. Hmm. She was born Teresa Susan Donahue, and it was May of 1869 when she was born in San Francisco. And she was destined to become one of San Francisco history's most memorable madams. Born into a working class Irish Catholic family, Tessie, as everyone called her, was one of 10 children. And her family lived south of Market, uh, south of Market Street, that mm -hmm. is, you know, for those of you not in San Francisco. Tessie's father was a longshoreman but died when she was young, leaving her mother and the children in difficult circumstances. Her mother cleaned the houses of the rich on San Francisco's Knob Hill, and Tessie would have felt, well, the family's situation did improve a bit when Tessie married a fireman by the name of Wall. Mm. Now, she gave birth to a son, but she was extremely bored and unhappy and doomed to the conventional life of a housewife. Uh, she was not happy at all. But as fate would have it, the fireman died, leaving Tessie with her son on their own. And she continued helping her mother cleaning the houses and homes of the rich. And one day, a wealthy banker on Knob Hill took notice of Tessie's beauty. Mm. Her beautiful blonde hair and blue, blue eyes were striking. And as has been said, Tessie was a head turner. Mm. Now, Judah Boaz was a banker, and he's the one that told Tessie, with your beauty... You can make more money working as a pretty dancehall girl rather than being a domestic servant and cleaning houses. And so Tessie quickly gained a reputation and was very successful. She took him up on that advice. And she became very successful as a dancehall girl. She was paid to dance, get men drunk, and for an extra fee, entertain them upstairs privately. Mm. Tessie also had the talent and the ability to drink men under the table. One such man was the heavyweight boxing champion, John L. Sullivan. And in other stories, there are many, many, many stories about Tessie and notorious ways that she impressed people with her drinking abilities. Mm. She put, uh, one time I was told she drank 22 bottles of champagne hmm. and was still standing. Sounds like a clamper. My goodness. Uh, well, she could well be, eh? Yes. Well, one day what happened in, in uh, 1898, Tessie had made enough money to open her own sporting house. And it was on O'Farrell Street. It was, the, uh, it was very top end. And her clients were the elite and the powerful of San Francisco. Now, Tessie loved antiques and fine things to decorate her place of business. And uh, her first brothel was destroyed in the San Francisco earthquake of April 1906. Do you know she soon opened an even grander, elegant establishment down the street? Mm. The same year, at 337 O'Farrell, the current site of the San Francisco Hilton Hotel. Ah, yes. Now, the main floor was a, a saloon for drinking and gambling and some entertainment. But upstairs was a grand mirrored ballroom with a dining room 
a kitchen, and 12 bedrooms. Hmm. Tessie kept between 10 to 15 girls working for her. And, you know, the situation, I think I explained a bit of this last week in the episode of Atoy, the Madame Atoy of Chinatown. There were different degrees of sex work in those days. You, The poorest of the poor, the slave workers, who were forced into slavery as sex work. And then there was the crib system. Sometimes sex workers would get together and they would have a little stall, such as where Maiden Lane currently is located. Mm. That was notorious as Morton Street back in the day. And it was a different level of prostitution of those days. Now, if you had a house, a Spartan house, it was a little better as far as safety because you could uh, filter in your customers and know who was coming and going and that have a better mm -hmm. uh, security of it. Plus, you had more privacy. It was more discreet and cleaner conditions. Let's face it, San Francisco was not a very hygienic place indeed. Water was hard to come by, soap and bath and all that was not on the priority for a lot of people. Unlike today, oh, right? Yes. yes, things are much better now. We have moved on. Yes. But anyhow, so Tessie set up a different standard. And her guests were all greeted cordially and politely. She had strict enforcing rigid standards of manners. And... Um, when you arrived and you would come into the parlor, you could either go into the saloon or go directly upstairs to meet the dinner party or just go up to your room with one of the uh, entertainers, mm -hmm. you know. So as soon as you came in the front doors, her guests were greeted as they arrived with a needlepoint motto that was hanging and framed on the wall that read, and I will quote, if every man was as true to his country as he is to his wife, God help the USA. <laughs> well, one might note that gambling, drinking and sex are very compatible in business. And although clientele certainly had plenty of Tessie's competition to choose from, Tessie was the most popular. Now, just to give you an idea, uh, often when someone was really popular like Tessie, the competition would open up directly across the street. Mm. So Jesse Diamond Heyman was right across the street from her. And that's the place I mentioned in one of the previous episodes that a lot of wives could tell their husband had had some time there because they came home with these well-polished shoes yes, that was one of her little things a uh, little uh um, service the frosting on the cake yes, you yes. might say and to answer mm. one of the questions from one of our viewers um jesse street in san francisco is likely named after her but there's no way of proving that at this point mm -hmm. and sometimes when you get down to the nitty-gritty some of those streets that we think here in San Francisco are named after prostitutes or madams that were favorites. Um, it may have been a proper polite society person, like a relative such as Octavia, mm -hmm. of one of the supervisors and politicians. Other places, however, ministry, M-I-N-N-A. In research, I've seen that that is named after Minnie Ray Simpson. And she was here during the time you were here, Indeed. Your Majesty. Indeed. And actually, you gave her a little nickname. Do you remember what that is? Now, he's 200 and something. The Little Countess. Oh, yes, yes. indeed. She was only 14, bless her heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. And got pregnant. There are pictures of her in her pregnancy. And, uh, you know, it was a hard life, indeed. But back to Tessie. So she had this very high-end establishment, and the gambling was such a part of it. And many of the professional gamblers would come in, and especially the high-end society. Well, one of the professional gamblers was Frank Durow. Hmm. Now, he pulled at Tessie's heartstrings. Frank was very political in San Francisco and owned several pool halls and gambling dens. 
Now, she fell in love with Frank, and Frank was incapable of being faithful. You know, some people are just like that. They're like a butterfly, you know. They twit from, uh, they flit from one flower to the next. Mm -hmm. You know, that's their lifespan. Well, Frank was kind of like that. But she was insistent. And Tessie kept pressuring Frank to marry her. And he finally gave in. Well, they had a very lavish wedding and they held it down at Aberton, which is south of San Francisco, very hoity-toity part very of swank. the very Bay swank. Area. Yes, indeed. And so basically at the reception, the wedding started to go downhill immediately because there was uh, Frank DeRaw smoking a cigar, sitting back with Mayor Sonny Jim Rolfe, who, by the way, kept it secret that he was coming to the wedding. And Tessie overheard Frank tell the mayor, yes, I'm going to build a beautiful mansion down here in Atherton for Tessie, and she's given up her business in San Francisco. Mm. Well, she overheard it. She put her hand on her hip and came sashaying over to Frank and Sonny Jim Rowe, and she says, if you fucking think that I'm giving up my business in San Francisco and moving to godforsaken Atherton. I might as well be a lamppost on Powell Street. Mm -hmm. Well, the marriage started going downhill immediately. She found out he was cheating. Oh, Yes, indeed. Well, Frank filed for divorce, and Tessie wasn't having it. And that was in 1917. Now, she found out, I will tell you, this is the nitty-gritty of it. We talk about justice. You know all about justice. Oh, yes. She found out he was cheating, and he was out with some floozy, you know. So she found out they were in a certain theater, and she went there by dark and hid in a, a dark space, you know, and put a revolver in the folds of her skirts to hide. And she waited. She knew him like a book. She knew it in her mission. He would come outside and have to have a cigar. And so he did indeed. He came outside. He lit up his cigar and he looked up to the stars. And she shot him three times. Oh my. He fell in a pool of blood. Tessie ran to his side. And she said, God damn you, Frank. I loved you. I had to kill you. Hmm. Well, he survived. Oh. And so... The supervisors in the city thought it was only proper to see what her defense was in attempted murder. Mm -hmm. So they put her on the stand and they said, so Tessie, why did you try to kill Frank Duro? She says, God damn it, I loved him. I had to kill him. He was cheating. Mm. They said she's an emotional woman and they let her off. My, my. Yes. Well, from the 1920s until her death in April of 1932, Tessie was the unofficial queen of the policeman's ball, wearing white satin and diamonds and her blonde hair. And every year, even though she had divorced Frank, she finally had to succumb to that in court. Mayor Sonny Jim Rolfe would escort her in. And she would attend the last policeman's ball in 1932, one month before her death. Hmm. Now, I will tell you, when you hear the stories of Teresa Susan Donahue and many of the madams of how their lives were so up and down, you know, and they had money, then they lost money, mm -hmm. or they lost their to they gave in to their passions and there was attempted murder and all that sort of thing you would think that somebody like tessie's walls life would end at the hand of someone violent one would think yes however it did not hmm. and for those of you out there in the healthcare professions let this be a lesson learned what happened one time, and uh, right after the policeman's ball, Tessie had an impacted tooth, and she extracted it herself, and she hemorrhaged to death. Oh, my. And that was the end of poor Tessie Wall. Hmm. But her legacy lives on, and as we've often said, 
We don't write history. History, history writes, writes itself. itself. It's very true. Indeed. That's Tessie Wool's story. Indeed. What a There's so much more story. to say, yes. My, my. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yes. So what else do you have in store for us today, Countess? Well, I think we should have a little musical entertainment, and I think we have a special guest today. Oh, how wonderful. And our guest today will have to be conjured up. You know, she's been terrorizing the stage for years and years, and she's had so much plastic surgery done that when she dies, she's donating her body to Tupperware. <laughs> This queen owns a dog with no legs, and she named it Cigarette. So every night she takes it out for a drag. <laughs> well, my friends, I want to present to you straight from the horny bull bareback bar in Kyleen, Texas, the ever not so very talented and hopefully in key. Reina Terror, and we're oh. going to conjure her up, Your Majesty. Oh boy, oh boy. Reina Terror, iggity piggity bumblebee, let me conjure up Reina Terror for me.
Oh, that was wonderful, Countess. Thank you, Reina Terror. That was lovely. Well, we will have more guests in the future. And coming up, as a reminder, History Days, Your Majesty? That's right. History Days is going to be on the 25th and 26th of September. Here's the website for that. We will be giving a talk on the 25th. Uh, haven't gotten the time yet about uh, us and our connection to Yerba Buena and therefore Treasure Island, the Treasure Island History Association. Also, very important event coming up. Empire Day. Empire Day, yes, on September 17, at 7 p.m., we ask you to join the Emperor Norton Legacy League via Zoom. If you go to the, uh, the Facebook page for the Emperor Norton Legacy League, you can sign up there. It's all virtual, but there's the recipe on there for the Emperor Norton Sunday. And we're going to be asking people to talk about what the Emperor means to them, as well as having a session of Ask the Emperors. You can ask us whatever you want. Or the Countess. I'll be on as well. Okay, wonderful. Yes. Uh, in addition, as the Countess mentioned earlier, we do accept tips. It does cost money to do this vlog. We appreciate all of our generous donors. If you want to do a monthly program, uh, do Patreon. Or if you want to make a one-time donation, the PayPal link is here as well. In addition, if you would like more information about what the Countess and I normally do, and we are starting to do these things once again as things open up, we do tours, special events, lectures, weddings, funerals, bar mitzvahs, whatever. Here's the websites for that information. Anything else, Countess? I can't imagine. Perhaps if you want to, once again, if you would like to leave us a tip, uh, anything else from that? And be safe out there. Indeed. So, until we see you again, stay safe, stay inside, and therefore, stay healthy. If you do go outside, wear a mask. Be kind to one another. And until we see you again, a gracious good day. Au revoir.